So the Polaroid i2, this was released a few weeks ago and I made a first look video talking about the camera, its features. This is really aimed at the enthusiast or professional photographer who wants manual control. If you wanna learn all about the camera, I'll put a card up at the top of the screen so you can check that out. I'll give you a quick summary. Uh, I love this camera. I was really excited about it when it was first revealed. Um, I've been using it nonstop over the last few weeks. And in that time, I've gotten one really common question, and that's how does this camera compare to the SX70? That's been one of my all time favorite cameras in general, definitely the Polaroid camera that I've used the most out of all of them that I've owned. And a lot of people have asked, how does it compare? Which one would you choose? Uh, the camera or the version of the SX70 that I've been using for a while now is this. This is the SLR 670S. This is made by Mint Camera. It's a modified SX70 that gives you manual control over your shutter speed. I've also made videos about this camera in the past. I'll link those up top as well. But the SX70 is a camera that's going to choose the shutter speed and everything for you. You don't have manual control. These two cameras feel like a much more fair comparison. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to compare how these cameras are, uh, everything from, you know, the actual specs of the camera, what it's like shooting with them, the advantages and disadvantages of each camera. And if you're interested in either one of these, the whole goal of this video, hopefully by the end of it, you'll be able to decide which camera is going to be best for you. I'm going to give you my honest thoughts on each camera. So this video is not sponsored by Polaroid or by Mint Camera. It is sponsored by Squarespace. So, you know, squarespace.com slash Matt Day, promo code Matt Day, 10% off. I'll tell you more about them in a little bit. But first, let's take a look at how these cameras actually compare to each other. I've got all of my notes and specs here on each camera written out. So we're going to dig into the tail of the tape here. Let's start with the price and how that compares. By far the most common criticism of the Polaroid i2 since it's been released has been the price. This camera retails for 599 US dollars, which is no small amount of money, absolutely. The Mint SLR 670S, on the other hand, retails for 919 US dollars, so pretty considerable difference here. Uh, we'll see how you know the advantages and the pros and cons of each really weigh out. Uh, the shutter speed range, the Polaroid i2 has a maximum shutter speed of 1 to 50th of a second. That can slow down all the way to 30 seconds or a bulb exposure. The Mint SLR 670S, on the other hand, you can go up to 1 2,000th of a second, all the way down to half a second. We're going to have to pause the video and talk a little bit more in depth about the shutter speed dial on this camera because Ben from In An Instant just revealed some pretty important information to me regarding this shutter speed dial and how it actually works, something I had no idea about despite shooting with it for a few years. So let's talk about this. When you meter for this camera, you're supposed to meter at f8 because that's the widest aperture you can use on this camera but very rarely are you actually gonna be shooting at f8. The camera is gonna be choosing the aperture for you based on the shutter speed that you choose. And if you choose the shutter speeds of let's say one 2,000th of a second or one 1,000th or one 500th, the camera isn't actually gonna be shooting at a shutter speed that fast. That's just going to basically tell the camera what your exposure meter is telling you. That way it's gonna choose the appropriate equivalent exposure. I don't know why I thought Mint was able to somehow make this camera shoot at a faster shutter speed than it was originally designed to be, but that's just what I bought maybe because it was on the shutter speed dial. Uh, however, that's not the case. It's giving you just equivalent exposures to choose from as you use a regular handheld light meter so you're able to get a correct exposure. So it does give you more control, but it's not truly manual like I assumed it was. Like the example that Ben gave me, let's say I set my shutter speed dial to one two thousandth of a second, the actual exposure that the camera is using could end up being like f64 and one two hundredth of a second. So not being able to control the depth of field or the actual shutter speed that's being used, you're just working off of equivalent exposures. That changes a lot in terms of how these cameras stack up against one another because the i2, you can actually choose the specific aperture and shutter speed anytime you want. It's not going to do any of the guesswork for you unless, of course, you want to use auto or aperture priority or shutter priority. 
been explained to me that the shutter speed and the aperture blades are actually paired within this camera. So unless you're in really low light situations, you're probably rarely ever going to be shooting at f8. So that definitely changes a lot about what I thought I knew about this camera and especially how it stacks up against the i2, which we'll get into more of that throughout the rest of this video. But anytime I mention controlling exposure with this camera or choosing the shutter speed, things like that, keep this information in mind because it was only just now revealed to me and not before I, you know, hit record. So uh, thank you, Ben, for sharing this information with me. And now back to the video. The aperture ranges on the two cameras, the Polaroid i2, you're going to be able to choose your aperture from f8 to f64, whereas on the 670s, you're locked in at f8 and you're just choosing your shutter speed based off of that. Now the film types of each camera, the Mint SLR 670S can use SX70 or 600 speed film. Since you're manually setting your exposure, you can use either speed, but you also do have A100 and A600. That's going to be your automatic mode for the camera. So you can still use either speed, whether it's fully manual or fully automatic. Now with the i2, on the other hand, this camera can use SX70, 600 or i type film. On the older cameras, you had to have a battery inside the actual film cartridge to power the camera. With the new cameras, they have a built-in battery inside the camera body itself. This allows them to make i-type film, which doesn't have a battery inside the cartridge, which results in a cheaper pack of film. With Polaroid film, anywhere you can save a little bit of money on the film itself, that's great. Um, also, a quick tip on that, if you buy from Polaroid's website and you buy it in bulk, whether it's packs of three or packs of five, you do also get additional savings on that. So I typically buy five to ten packs at a time and just throw it in the fridge. So try and save yourself as much money as you can when it comes to this film. But using the iType film with this camera, getting it for a better price overall, uh, that's definitely great. Now, as I said, each camera, I think, has their own unique advantages and disadvantages. Some advantages of the 670S or any of the SX70 style cameras, the fact that it folds down into such a portable setup here, this is the main reason that this camera has been used the most out of any Polaroid cameras I've ever owned. I've taken this on countless trips. You can throw it in like a large jacket pocket. Uh, you can put it in pretty much any camera bag. This camera just goes anywhere. So uh, the fact that it has this design, this classic folding design, I mean, it's iconic. It stood the test of time. Um, on top of that, just based on the design here, you have this viewfinder that's going into a number of different mirrors inside the camera. That's going to allow you to actually see through the lens, which is not a common thing on most instant cameras in general. Uh, being able to look through the lens, see exactly what your composition is, see where your focus is. Uh, you have a manual focus dial right here on the camera. Uh, it's just a really enjoyable experience. And speaking of the focusing, you can focus incredibly close with this camera uh, up to 0.26 meters as opposed to the i2's 0.4 meters, which doesn't sound like that much of a difference. But in practical use, putting the, the closest distance side by side, you can see it really does make a pretty big difference. So if you like to get close, which I often do with Polaroid cameras, especially portraits, that's been one of my favorite things about the SX70 all these years. The fact that you can get so close because that's definitely a pretty uncommon thing amongst most instant cameras. So I think those things are what makes this camera so unique and what its advantages are. Let's talk about the advantages of the i2 and as much as I can gush about the SX70, uh, the camera I've been using the most all these years in terms of instant film, I love it, I always will. I've gotta say there are a lot of advantages with the i2. First of all, the autofocus on this camera is great. It's super fast, super accurate. As much as I enjoy the process of manually focusing, looking through the lens on the SX70, this camera I'm much quicker with and I know it's gonna be accurate. There's no worse feeling than waiting like 15 minutes after you shot a photo with a Polaroid only to find out you uh, misfocused a little bit. So the fast and accurate autofocus of the i2 is amazing. The i2 not only has a built-in flash, but it also has a sync port. So if you'd like to use this in a studio setting, sync it with some off-camera lighting, it's great for that. However, the Mint SLR 670S, you have this module here on top of the camera that just clicks into this little accessory port. Because this is gonna have to be in the camera to use it, 
you're not going to be able to attach any flash bars or the old flash bulbs that they used to make. This is taking up that real estate for a lot of different accessories. So just keep that in mind as well. That's kind of an important thing. Um, I would take it off to show you, but I actually put a little bit of Gorilla Glue underneath the module and then connected it. So uh, it would sometimes fall out, whether it was in the camera bag or something. And I was always worried something would happen to it or I would lose it. So uh, yeah, now it's it's permanently on there. I know, I'm a disgusting person. Some built-in features of the i2. Multiple exposure is built right in. There's no workarounds. You can do some multiple exposure work with the SX70 style cameras, kind of, you know, folding the door down when you shoot so it doesn't eject the film out. You kind of have to trick the camera. So there are workarounds, but it's built right in with the i2. You also have a self-timer built right in. You don't have to work with any sort of like attachment or third-party accessory. Self timers built right in the viewfinder having all of the information you need your shutter speed aperture light meter frame counter flash indicator focus distance like the viewfinder has all of the information you need you don't have to take your eye away from the viewfinder at all whereas with the 670s you're not getting any of that information in the camera all you see is the dial on top of the camera so i've come to really appreciate those details in the viewfinder especially the focus distance um, just being able to see everything it's great as I've mentioned, you've got more affordable film with the i2. You've got more control over your exposure and your depth of field, allowing you to actually choose your aperture with this camera. I've also found that the light meter, shooting these two cameras side by side on automatic mode, I've found that the light meter on the i2 has been consistently more accurate every single time. So the cameras do have different specs in some cases. They each do have their own unique advantages. So if I were to only choose one of these, it's tough. I've got a lot of thoughts on that, and I'll tell you about that right after I pay some bills and tell you about our sponsor today, Squarespace. When I first created MattDayPhoto.com 10 years ago, I did it with Squarespace. This was long before they ever decided to sponsor my channel, but I chose Squarespace because it was just a no-brainer. They had everything I needed in one place, and all these years later, they're still continuing to build and add new features to their service, all while keeping it extremely easy to use while you do it yourself. Drag and drop customization, tons of different templates to choose from, along with 24-7 award-winning customer service that are always there when you need them. You can share your work there, have a place where people can contact you or even schedule appointments. You can even set up your own online store. Since I launched MattDayPhoto.com, I've sold my own zines, photo books, prints, and merch all through my own website. No need to use a third-party service. And they also have tons of different plugins from third parties to keep everything in one place. Keeping track of your inventory, shipping fulfillment, it's all a breeze with their built-in tools. It's never been easier to build your own website, and you can start a free trial by going to squarespace.com slash mattday. Use the promo code MATTDAY at checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So, if I could only use the i2 or the 670s or just SX70, we can kind of lump those two in together. If I can only use one of these for the rest of my life, I would honestly pick the i2, which I did not expect to have that opinion a month ago before I got this camera in my hands. Um, the SX70 style camera has been with me for so long and I love it, still do love it. The i2 just has more control and more features built right into it. That's really what it comes down to. You've got a much sharper lens in this camera. Comparing the two side by side, especially shooting the same subject, it's definitely noticeable. But even if you're not doing that, it's really impressive how sharp this lens really is, and especially for an instant camera, uh, it's really, really great. Having more control over the exposure and the depth of field, being able to choose your aperture, having a more accurate light meter, having the flash built in, the self timer built in, Everything built into this one camera, despite it not being as compact as the uh, SX70, although size-wise, this is definitely not a large camera by any means. Um, despite that, despite not being able to look through the viewfinder, which I'm still getting used to like how I need to frame things up since I can't see through the lens, still working on that and getting used to it. Uh, and despite not being able to focus as close, that is something I love doing with the SX70 cameras. And I do miss not being able to do that with this camera. But ultimately, that camera is the SX70 camera is something that 
I've really enjoyed using in terms of the process uh, or just the feel of using it. But the more I use the i2, the more I not only enjoy using the camera, but I really appreciate the results more than the actual experience. And that's ultimately what it's all about, especially photos of my family and my kids as they grow. Uh, being able to have a really capable camera in a number of different scenarios it's just, it's really the ultimate kind of everyday Polaroid camera. It's also worth noting that the i2 is the only Polaroid camera I brought to Brooklyn. When I went to Brooklyn last month or earlier this month, the 670S stayed at home. I didn't pack it despite it being super compact and portable. This is the camera I took with me and I'm really glad I did considering the fact that I could use the flash, I could shoot in lower light scenarios, trust the autofocus in those lower light scenarios, um, super happy I brought this camera with me and that to me that said a lot that I was able to leave my all-time favorite Polaroid camera at least at the time I do think the i2 just kind of pushes it out and this is my favorite Polaroid camera to date um, again was not expecting to feel that way when this camera was first you know revealed to me and uh, when I first opened it up but those are just my thoughts. I tried to share as much as I could in terms of like a head to head comparison between the two, share what my results were and my thoughts. Ultimately, uh, this is just meant to give you more information on the two cameras and how they compare if you're interested in either one. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, let me know in the comments down below and share any of your own thoughts or which camera you prefer. Uh, we'll keep the conversation going down there. But that's it for this video. Uh, thank you all for watching. I love you guys. I'll see you soon.